So, I got kissed by a magical bug, and now I have superpowers? Don't worry, this isn't that top 10. Nothing should be that top 10. These are the most enjoyably bad of the thousand superhero movies I watched researching this book. Not the absolute worst. So thank Odin there's no return of Thor, Avenging Force, or Super Babies. There's nothing more super than teamwork. Just honest rubbish from some of the world's most under-resourced and misunderstood filmmakers. First up is Paradox which introduces another dimension in which magic fulfills the role of science in our world. Kevin Sorbo's detective Sean Nolt investigates a murder carried out with a device he can't conceive of. What? How can you drive a piece of metal into a guy's head hard enough to kill him without using magic? A gun. Instead of coroners, there are necromancers and so on, and chemistry is treated with the skepticism we reserve for magic and Kevin Sorbo movies. Nolt's superpower is that he understands science in the way Doctor Strange understands magic. It's a 44 Magnum. The most powerful handgun in their world. The movie's power lies in ideas like having Churchill go into battle with Hitler while wielding Excalibur. But England was saved when Churchill located the fabled sword Excalibur. Until a couple of decades ago, India was the world's primary producer of superhero movies, and by the late 80s had released at least four Superman knockoffs alone, each with their own moments of joy and wonder. But Shiva Ka Insaf is India's best value offering, despite the horrible deinterlacing, because it doesn't know it's a comedy. India's first 3D movie, you'd never guess it was originally 3D, details the exploits of a 40-year-old teenage vigilante who battles crime with tiny tridents and a bicycle. At number 8. David Hasselhoff famously thought he'd be reprising the role of Nick Fury when the MCU launched with Iron Man, and reminded anyone who'd listen that Stan Lee called his portrayal definitive, despite his Fury being little more than a cliché delivery device. It's time for me to move on. Because they changed the rules? For me, Kate, there never were any rules. The movie doesn't offer much action, but the nutty plot moves quickly. The minor characters are all funny, and there's a lot of this. What are the charges? For starters, insubordination, incitement to mutiny, unauthorized use of a military vehicle. You forgot one. Attempted grievous bodily harm. <laughs> <laughs> A few hours ago, they were traitors. Now, they are the hope of the world. The feature-length pilot for this short-lived TV series intros a team of superheroes comprised of genetic oddballs. And they really are oddballs, on screen and off. Leader Dr. Billy Hayes was played by Dean Martin, son of Dean Martin. Iceman Beef by Bob Dylan's former drummer Mickey Jones, telekinetic teenager Gloria Dinalo by a young Courtney Cox, and incredible shrinking man L. Lincoln by the predator himself, Kevin Peter Hall. What are they doing to you? What's happened? They're all awful. When I see you guys, I see something different. I see a team. But the movie itself is charming, and far more entertaining than stuff like The New Mutants. <laughs> I'm never going to pass up the chance to put Neil Breen on a top 10 list, and technically his most recent droppings qualify as a superhero movie. Twisted Pair is something to do with twin brothers being given superpowers, and one turning evil while the other tries to save the world from some sort of something. I've seen it half a dozen times, and even co-hosted the European premiere, but I've got no idea what any of it means. We will live in a virtual metaverse. It's probably the most impenetrable of the great man's films, and therefore one of his best. It's time to end his global plans. Filmmaker Yilmaz Atadeniz found fame during the European superhero craze of the 1960s, when he brought Fermetti Neri anti-hero Killing to life in a series of low-budget action movies 
delivering one of the first Turkish Superman ripoffs in the process. But his best work is undoubtedly this unhinged and unofficial remake of 1940 Hollywood serial Mysterious Dr. Satan, about a young man who adopts the identity of the mythic Copperhead to fight an elaborately mustachioed evildoer. It's unbelievably badly made for a professional job. I love how this fight scene has no transition shots taking us from the indoor to the outdoor locations and back. But the highlight is the cardboard robot Dr. Satan uses to capture hostages, including this bizarre mashup of Sherlock Holmes and Cluzo. Fun fact, star cunt Tulga went on to direct Superman Donnie Ur, one of the most notorious foreign superhero ripoffs. Rama Superman Indonesia is so obscure it isn't even on the IMDb, but it is on YouTube and I recommend you watch it. Many Southeast Asian superheroes are bestowed their powers by magical amulets, and Rama is no different, except that in his everyday guise he's a fat child. The standards are shocking and the action comes off worst. This wardrobe scene is meant to be the climax to a major chase, but looks like it was improvised in a spare bedroom. And even when a little thought and planning goes into a sequence, they must at least have had some kind of jib for this. The execution is ridiculous. That said, it's always better to try and fail than to be Bruce Willis. Particularly when it comes to robot fights. <laughs> Of Puma Man's two main stars, Walter George Alton never acted again, and Donald Pleasance branded it the worst of the 180 feature films in which he appeared. It is indeed his lowest rated on both the IMDb and Letterboxd, which is a crime. That information, and a few clips of Puma Man doing this kind of thing, should be all you need to form an opinion but I'll tell you it's about a paleontologist who learns the hard way that he's a supernatural Aztec demigod fathered by aliens. And he has to save the world from an evil archaeologist who's using the Puma Man's golden mask to mind control world leaders. Jump! Fly! <laughs> It might be the most universally enjoyable good-bad superhero movie of all, and could easily be placed higher if it weren't for that beach dance in Shock Till Arai. By which I mean this beach dance and this Shock Till Arai. Bangla Robocop, as it tends to be called, dates from the mid-90s, I think, and features Danny Sidak, who also starred in Bangla Superman and Bangla King Kong as a scientist who's robotized after being crippled by overenthusiastic squibs. From this starting point we get a very different story married to some familiar scenes. More than familiar actually because what can't be ripped off is literally stolen. This insert was lifted from the Robocop TV series. Is Robocop a superhero? Bangladeshi Robocop has a dual identity, experimental biomechanical upgrades and an altruistic objective which makes him more of a classic superhero than half the Avengers. The fact remains this is a low budget, over two hour long Bangladeshi musical with no subtitles, so it may not be for everyone. But give it a chance, perhaps skip through it. Again, it's not on the IMDb, but it is on YouTube. You don't need to watch the whole thing, just don't miss the conclusion in which rip-off Robocop fights Lady Terminator. Julie! And at number one. Those clickbait top tens can't be wrong all the time. And Supersonic Man is where they often get it right. It's a good bad singularity. 
the point at which all roads meet, and it's got everything. From determined miniatures to a dubbed Cameron Mitchell playing a demented Bond villain with, of course, a killer robot. Bravo! Bravo! And Supersonic Man himself is unbeatable. When not stealing booze so his alter ego can get a woman drunk and take advantage of her, he can fly in space, run really fast, make stuff disappear, turn guns into bananas, and lift heavy machinery that definitely isn't made of cardboard. He's the king. Honourable mentions include Superman 4, for those who like their bad superheroes familiar, and I'm a big fan of The Demolitionist. Hell has no fury like a woman transformed. In terms of other wacky foreign offerings, there's Japan's gothic Lolita Battle Bear, in which a mad woman and her magic teddy fight zombies. <laughs> Canada's Nightman, which takes place in the same universe as Manimal, and sees a jazz musician struck by lightning in a cable car accident, which tunes his brain to the frequency of evil. I'm not making any of this up. I'm all hearing bad stuff. Yes, exactly. You're tuned to the frequency of evil. Indonesia's Panji Tengarak movies, which are at least twice as mental as they look. <laughs> Anything with Chinit Arkan. <laughs> and the Philippines' alias Batman and Robin. If only for the song at the end. Thanks for watching. Everything in this video features in my book, The A to Z of Superhero Movies, from Abar to Zaza via the MCU, and so do hundreds of other oddities. I didn't even mention Dwarf Spider-Man, Pinoy He-Man, or the Argentinian transvestite Wonder Woman. Links to buy are in the video description.